go to Christianity and doctrine. Who taught us that? Who taught them? Who taught them guys to respect the truth? It's talking about the white man. Read it again. You don't know Christ, brother. You don't know Christ. See? Beware. Lest any man spoil you. Who spoils this Negro right here? The white man. Read. Through philosophy. It's philosophy he's coming with. And another little man in the back. Read. What is this evening lie? Vain lie. It's me. Who fought them after the tradition of men? The white man fought our people out. That's what they're coming with. No, but don't they fight the black? Nobody sees Jesus Christ. Everybody sees nobody. This is Negro. That's what they're coming with. To keep us on the bottom. But your day is over. The mind of the slave is finished. But this shall be. But this war that's coming up now shall be what? Shall be with burning and fuel of fire. That's plain. But this war is going to be with burning and fuel of fire, meaning nuclear destruction. All right, we're Israel United in Christ. Um, we established with Bishop Nathaniel and Bishop Kanai. And uh, we come to come out here today to let y'all know that uh, you said we was going to go over Greek and um, Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. So that we are the original Hebrews and we are the original Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Mm -hmm. And that um, everything is scripture. You know, they never taught us that in schools. But I'm not, I'm going to digress and we're going to let the Bible explain itself later on. So I just want to induce, introduce myself. My name is Officer DeWater, by the way. But uh, how's everybody doing this today? I was going to say this morning. Is it past? Okay, it is this morning. Um, the scripture says a man's going to the Lord. So for some reason, we got caught up on some type of dirt road. And uh, my iPhone got blamed. His iPhone got blamed. Then the Android actually pulled up the same address. So it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the phone. It was uh, more slow. We got the wrong address. But we're happy to be here. We thank you all for having us, Dr. Walkers. Um, we appreciate you all for having us today. And basically, we just want to do a presentation about our culture and our history as it pertains to the Bible. Because, uh, get Isaiah 1 and 3. When you read the scriptures, when you read the Bible, there are 18 nations in the Bible, right? And out of those 18 nations, more, we have to come from one of those nations. Right. Now, majority of the time, you learn that we are a Hamitic race. We come from Ham. Uh, curse be Canaan, we've heard that before. Uh, a lot of people are told that our black skin was actually a curse, but it's the complete opposite. It's the complete opposite of that. And that's what we teach, and that's what we're here to teach. So uh, get Isaiah 1 and 3 real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1. All right, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Go ahead. The ox knoweth his owner. So this is a prophecy. The Lord gave Isaiah the word to give a prophecy. He said, the ox knoweth his owner. Now, we all country people in here. You've seen an ox before. Mm -hmm. right. It's a dumb animal. He can't, you know, he can't critically think like you and I. Two plus two, go down the road, take a right. He, can, he don't think like that, but he knows who owns him, right? Go ahead. And he asks his master's crib. And a donkey, if you take it 30 miles down the road, he'll find his way home. So he knows where his homeland is. Read. But Israel. But the Israelites, God's chosen people, come on. Does not know. Right? They don't know. God said the Israelites don't know who their God is and where they're from. Read. My people. His people. Read. Does not consider. And they don't even consider who they are. Now, a lot of times you see our people in the um in gangs. You see our young people on drugs. You know. Uh, all kind of evil that you see out in the world today in 2018, you say, well, where did it start? Where did this come from? It stems from a lack of identity. If I tell a dog that he's a cat for 40 years, and then in year 41, I say, well, no, you're actually a dog. He's going to continue doing tendencies of a cat because he's been taught that he was a dog, that he was a cat, and he's actually a dog. And when his animalistic um, spirit come out, his animalistic nature comes out, and he don't behave like a cat no more, now he's behaving like a dog, he's like, where did this come from? That's what you see with our young men in the prison system. That's what you see with our young men on the corner selling drugs to one another. It's an animalistic spirit that's in them, and they don't know why it's coming out at the time that it's coming out. It's because they've been programmed. So we're going to get into the presentation. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We all know about Deuteronomy 28, uh, 28 chapter. I'm sure Dr. Watkins has gone over there with you all. 
is the curses and the blessings. Right. What would happen to the right. Israelites if they kept God's commandments? Right. And what would happen to the Israelites if they broke God's commandments? All right, so let's read that. Deuteronomy 28, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments read. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, if the screen's kind of flickering a little bit, but you can see the scripture, and if you have your Bible, you can read along. The, uh, the Most High told Moses to tell the Israelites, if they broke his commandments, if they didn't keep his, their bargain of the covenant, that he would allow curses to come upon them. Now, we all know curses is not a good thing. Curse is a bad thing. And then, you know, even if if you were, if I say you're going to be cursed, the that's the magnitude of my curse compared to the God's curse is, is totally different. We're talking about the Lord of uh, heaven and earth. So when he say you're going to be cursed, it's going to be some very horrific things that take place afterwards. And this is what Moses told the Israelites would happen to them. Go to the next slide. Okay, read that. Verse 16, watch this. Verse 16. Cursed. Shall thou be in the city? So he said they will be cursed in the city. If you look here on the uh, display that we have, we were sold on auction blocks in every city in Mississippi. We were sold on Auction Street in Memphis, Tennessee. The first stock on Wall Street was happened to be so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans. We were the first stock on Wall Street before McDonald's became a stock, before Walmart became a stock, before Apple became a stock. We were the first stock. We were sold on auction blocks in the city. Now, even bring it up to today, if you look up the word ghetto, if you look at the definition, it said where the Jews often resort. Now, how many Jewish people do you know live in the ghettos? You don't see many. But we occupy the ghettos at a much, much higher rate. We sell the drugs to one another in the city. We're killing one another in the city. There's an abortion clinic on the majority of our uh, corners in our neighborhoods in the city. A lot of things, horrific things happen to our people in the city. And that's what the Bible said would happen to the Israelites. He said, curse shall thou be in the city. Go ahead, move on. Move on to the next slide. Just like it says, the slave market located where Wall Street reached the East River was established in 1711. Was established in 1711 as a place where enslaved blacks and Native Americans could be hired or purchased. That's our history. The Bible is telling you that the Israelites would be cursed in the city. Next slide. Thousands of blacks and Latinos and Native Americans were held in bondage and sold in the early colonial settlements of New France, Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Upper Canada. So that's why when you go to Canada today, you see a lot of black people there. Right. A lot of blacks, a lot of Native Americans, which are blacks as well, mm -hmm. and Hispanics. They occupy a lot of places because the Lord told us for disobedience in the future that we will be cursed in the city. Go ahead and read the next part. Can you go to the next slide, please? And cursed shall thou be in the field. Now, we all ride up 45 to go to Mississippi State football games. Uh, we go up to 45 to go to Memphis. Some of us go up I-55 to go to the Delta. And on the side of the roads, you will see something that's very common and that's very well known by our people, and that's those cotton fields. The Bible says we will be cursed in the field. So, I really want to get... You see you see that? that that's, that's a woman right there. Now, our sisters would be in the cotton fields alongside us, along with our children. If your children was old enough to pick cotton, whether they deemed that the child was old enough to do it, then they would have a child out there, three, four, or five years old, depending on how big your child was. If you was like I was, I was a big child, so they would have me out there probably four or five years old. So that's what the Bible is telling us. It said we would be cursed in the field. That's not just the cotton field. We was cursed in the tobacco fields in Mexico. We was cursed, uh, cursed in the rubber fields and the sugar cane fields. We, we picked a lot of cotton. Actually to the point to where the Delta, we all know what the Delta is. The Delta in the 1860s was the fourth largest economy in the world. The fourth largest economy in the world in the 1860s off of our blood, sweat, and tears of free labor. That's, we are the reason, we, you ever heard the old term, old money? Mm -hmm. This is where it comes from. Because we were not paid for 250 plus years of picking cotton. God told us, the Lord of heaven told us, if we were disobedient to his word, that this would happen to us. Mm -hmm. We would be forced to pick the cotton in the cotton field. Have you ever wondered that? Why, why did it happen to us? Why were we the ones subject to that? 
It's because our God in heaven told us that we were disobedient, it would happen. Skip down to verse, um, keep going. Uh, it's more, more cotton field, friends. Get down to verse, I want verse 18. Verse 18. Right. So read verse 18, please. Verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. So the fruit of your body is your children. Now, we may not think, you say, well, not my baby not cursing. She, she's in college, she's in college, she's got BMW doing well. We're doing well. No, what is, when it says curse shall be the fruit of your body, it means your children will be born into a society where a black man can't even put his hands up without getting shot. Amen. Right. Or a black man can't even say certain things without automatically becoming a suspect. You have to you have to ask yourself, you say, why does he why why do people look at us with the disdain and with the, the envy and the hatred that they look at us with? It's because we're the people of God. And he told us, he said, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Even to the point to where a lot of our children don't even make it into the world nowadays. The so-called black woman, because she's not black, she's an Israelite, the so-called black woman aborts forty thousand babies a month in America. Forty thousand children a month. Now if you read the book of Exodus, that's the same thing that Pharaoh told Shifra and Pud. He said, kill the, if it's a boy, kill him. It's the same thing that Herod tried to do to Jesus Christ. Because it's always been a fear of a black Messiah raising up. And that's when we, when we come together and we powerful and we don't want to accord according to God's word, we, we send a ripple effect through the world. And everybody takes notice of it. So he said, we're going to be cursed be the fruit of your body, Read, Cursed. And the, and the fruit of thy hand. And the fruit of thy land. So the fruit of thy land would basically be our crops. A lot of us don't have that. You know, a lot of us don't know anything about cropping any fields, growing any corn. We can't survive. We, we have to go to another nation of people to survive. That's what the Bible's saying. Go ahead. And the increase of thine kind. Read. And the flocks of, of thy sheep. So it said the increase of our kind, the flocks of our sheep. Our sheep and our, our crops will be taken from us. Now, our brothers, the Native American Indians, they rule this land. Right. Another nation of people came from Europe and took everything that they had. That's a curse that the Bible said was going to be on us. Let's get down to verse 25. Verse 25. One second. Verse 25. Go ahead. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. So they said the Lord will cause us to be smitten before our enemies, or the Israelites. We'll just keep it that way. It's talking about us, but we're going to make it clear. It says that the Israelites will be smitten before their enemies. This is always, this is always up until today. Because today, you will see us being shot down by police officers, shot down by, shot down by our own people. We ain't excusing our people. We, we on everybody. We're not just talking about what they do to us. We're talking about what we do to us. So the Bible says we was going to be smitten before our enemies. So when you look at Instagram, CNN, Facebook, you can go see a black man being shot down or a black woman being snatched out uh, the, uh, in Oklahoma. Our right. sister got punched right. in the face right. 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 by a Chinese man. Right. Right. And a black man went to try to, remember the black man went to try to, hey sister, y'all shouldn't shop there no more. She turned on him. How destroyed are we as a people? That we'll turn on our brothers that's trying to step up for us and stand up for us for the oppressor that's punching us in the face as if we're not a woman. As if we're not a woman. That's what the Bible is saying. We're going to be smitten before our enemies. Go ahead. Thou shalt go out one way against them Read. and flee seven ways before them. That's, a, that's that right there. I'm going to bring it up to, 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 to the 1960s. In the 1960s, we had something called the Civil Rights Movement. Some of you may have been a part of that or know about that. We would go out in one line in Selma, Alabama. We would go out in one line in Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, Meridian, Mississippi, and they would come with those dogs. Right. They would come with those water holes. Water they would throw that tear gas, and we would flee seven ways. That's what the Bible's talking about. Read. And shall be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. Get the next slide. I want them to see an image of that. See that? And we were removed into all kingdoms of the earth. When the 1611, or excuse me, 1619 transatlantic slave trade, we were taken from the west coast of Africa, and some of us were taken to Belgium, some of us were taken to France, Italy, some of us were brought here to the Americas, some to Brazil. The most slaves, a lot of people don't know, the most slaves were dropped off in Brazil. So those Brazilians down there, they call them Brazilian, those are your brothers. Those are your brothers and your sisters. Uh, skip down to verse 28. Verse 28. Go ahead. The Lord shall smite thee. Ver yeah, 28, yeah. The Lord shall Go smite ahead, thee with madness. 
and blindness. I'm sorry, I skipped something. Go to verse 26. I'm sorry. Read 26. I apologize. Deuteronomy Go back to 26. Chapter 28, verse 26. Read. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air. What's the sister that sang the song? Nina Simone. Nina Simone got a song called Strange Fruit. Black bodies swinging in the uh, southern breeze. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be of the age where you've actually seen a hanging or have experienced that. That's what God's telling us right here. He said, read that part again. Show it again. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the earth. Because they will leave our body up there. Right. Read. And unto the beast of the earth. And to the beast of the earth. Because you had your coyotes, your, your uh, what else we got out here in the country? Dogs. Wild hogs, all that will feed on our flesh from us hanging on that tree. Go ahead. And no man shall fray them away. And nobody had the decency. To say, Get away from that body. Get no, nobody had the decency to do that for us. That happened to us. And we know it's a true fact. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 28 now. I'm sorry. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. So it said the Lord would smite us with madness. When you look at um, every statistical category of any kind of mental illness, we're number one in it. We're always number one in it, whether it's dyslexia, whether it's Down syndrome, whether it's, give me some other ones, um, yeah, Alzheimer's, all these different diseases plague our people for one reason, one reason only, because we happen to be God's people, and we have still to this day been disobedient to his word, and that's why we lead the nation in every statistical category when it comes to any type of illness. Go ahead. And blindness. And blindness, read. And astonishment of heart. Because... We astonished because we will go in March, 2018 now, we will continue to go in March for equality. Why do I still have to tell another man that I'm equal to him in 2018? I am a man. I am a man. You know, all those things. And I, like I said, I see a lot of uh, people with some age and some wisdom in here, so I know a lot of you saw these things. You saw the things that we're talking about in the Bible. You were actually there in the flesh to see it. Go ahead. Verse 29. And we're going to skip around a little bit. Ready? And thou shalt grope at noonday, and the blind grope at the dark. So it said we was going to grope. Now, if you've ever seen a blind man, he groping. He trying to find where he's going. Oh, this is a person. Hey, how you doing? That's what, a, that's what a blind man does. It said us as a nation, we will grope at noonday as the blind grope in the darkness. What it mean by noonday? When, I, when, the, when it's noon, where's the sun? It's directly at the top. And all the light is shining down right on you. That's what he's talking about. Right now, the Bible is shining light on us right now. And a lot of us disrespect it. A lot of us don't want to read it. A lot of us want to do this, do that. Go, if you look at the image, you got the civil rights movement. We were groping. We were trying to find our way. You got Islam trying to find our way. You got all these different sects, different religions, different things. And we're trying to find our way in all of them. And that's one of the main reasons we can't come together. Because you believe this, I believe that. We're the same people. We came on slave ship together. But you know what? I'm going to stay away from you. That's what the Lord is saying. We was going to grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness. Read. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way. And because of that, we haven't prospered as a nation. It's not about, I play in the NBA. I know what it is. I've been around brothers with millions of dollars that just make a million dollars in two months like it ain't nothing. And just throw it at whatever. And they'll tell you, in their mind, they'll tell you, I ain't a slave. I'm not oppressed. I don't know, man. You, they should have got. They should have been good basketball players like me. That's what. That's how they. That's the image. That's how you start look down on your own people because where you are, and that's what the Bible's saying. We was gonna not prosper in our ways as a nation. It's about a nation. That's what we are. We're a nation. We came over here on slave ships together. We're gonna lead together. Go ahead. I mean, read, keep reading. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Read. And no man shall save thee. No, physical man. Because we know when Jesus Christ is coming back, he ain't coming back as a man. So it says that we shall only be oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. No individual man will be able to save as you had a uh, gentleman rise up like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, uh, Sojourner Truth, uh, Stokey Carmichael, uh, Fred Hampton, Eldris Cleaver. I mean, the list goes on and on. Marcus Garvey, uh, even women that step Harry Tubman. A lot of women stepped up too, would you say? Uh, two saints. Two saints down in, um, in, in Haiti, which is the so-called Levites. I mean, so-called Haitians are the Levites today. They try to rise up, and nobody has been able to individually save us because we haven't come together on one accord according to the Bible. And that's what it's about. Let's get down to verse 30. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. Some of y'all will be a bad witness with this. Read. 
Thou shalt betroth a wife. So this woman is promised to you. This is going to be your wife. Read. And another man shall lie with her. And another her. man come and knock on your door in the slave quarters and say, give me your wife. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about this earlier if you watched the movie The Butler. Now, if you remember the butler, um, what's his name? David Banner was come in the on. cotton field, That's and right. Mariah Carey was right. his wife. Right. And the master said, come on, you're going with me. Right. And you as a man, I'm a man now. Uh -huh. I got to watch my wife be led into a shack and doing God's know what with another man. And there was nothing that I could do about it because if not, you would have, what happened to David Banner? God. Shot him right there in the head in front of his son. Uh -huh. Just imagine the traumatic thoughts. The, the I mean, it's just trauma. That's just... A child don't need to see that. A man don't need to see that. This is a, it's not just physical, y'all. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual disconnect. You see what I'm saying? And that's what was caused by our enslavement because of our disobedience. It said, read it again from the top. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Read. And another man shall lie with her. Mm, read. Thou shalt build a house. Uh huh. And thou shalt not dwell therein. So who, who's, who built Master Big House? Hmm. Like we, did. We, did. we did. We did. Who built the White House? We did. We did. We did. We did. Who right. built the Great Wall of China? Y'all know we were scattered over there too. Our people right. over there too. China. We right. built the Great Wall of China. We built all the great inventions that you see in the earth. The pyramids. The pyramids. We built those. Read. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. And we will be in their field planting their crops and we would not be able to uh, receive the benefits of it. Skip down to 32 now. Verse 32. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Come on. Thy sons. Thy sons. Meaning your children. Read. And thy daughters. And your daughters. Come on. Shall be given. Shall be what? Given. Read. Unto another people. That's what we saw earlier when it said cursing the city. Our sons and daughters. 25, 35. Sold to Master Charles in West Virginia. Sold to Master James in Birmingham, Alabama. Right. But meanwhile, you live in Jackson, That's Mississippi. Right. Mississippi That's right. Mississippi. That's right. On a slave plantation. Mm -hmm. I can't make it. How am I going to see my child? I can't go see my child. I can't leave the plantation. And if I try to leave, you know what happened. So it said, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, another nation of people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look. And you're going to be able to physically see your sons and daughters detached from you. Read. And fall with fail with longing for them all the day long. If you ever seen um, 12 Years a Slave. Yes. You remember when they took the, the and she was crying and Solomon's brother Solomon said, look man, you gotta stop crying. They gone. He's like, man, let me weep for my children. Right. They, I, bear, I bear those children. Some of y'all went, some of y'all sisters got children. Imagine somebody coming in your house and taking your children. And we're gonna show you that it's still going on today because the DHS, if you could let your child put a, a, a little piece of metal in their socket and burn their little finger. And, if, and they find out, what was you doing when it was happening? Well, I was in the house cooking or I was outside doing this. You were unfit parent, take your children. Exactly. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Or our young men are the uh, military industrial complex. Now we got a uh, school to prison pipeline. It's the same thing. Your sons and daughters being taken from you and given to another nation of people. Because we don't run the prison system, unfortunately. Somebody else does. So we don't have the government system set up. So now he said, your eyes going to look. How many uh, mothers, some of y'all may be able to bear witness with this. How many mothers and fathers have watched their son be have an orange jumpsuit on with number 259-74537? That's his name now. That's what the Bible's saying. Our sons and daughters are going to be taken from us and given to another nation of people. And our eyes are going to fail with longing for them all the day long. Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. How many of y'all can afford a $100,000 retainer? For a, pre, uh, a lawyer, nope, right. can't do it. And at that time, you really couldn't do nothing about it. We don't have military might. We don't have financial or industrial might. We don't have any of those might to get our children back as a nation of people. Skip down to verse forty-six. Go ahead. Rick. As a matter of fact, before you before you go any further, let's go back in time as far as when, um, say, for instance, in the sixties, the fifties, when they put charges on. Your, your uncles, your cousins, say what? Say for instance, like Emmett Till. God. Okay, mm -hmm. Wilson, Letter White. Yeah. That just was, that case was publicized. Right. It right. was many other cases that happened like that. Right. Right. that don't think that, oh, that just that's happened right. one time. Right. No, 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 don't, don't fall right. for that. That stuff right. happened a lot of times that we was false things. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Maybe walking down the street. Oh, he was looking at my wife. Uh -huh. 
Okay, you know we got that happening in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, all over the country. So I just want to stress that point. Go ahead. No, hey, I'm glad you said that because you had the Jim Crow laws. You had convict leasing. Basically, when we were supposed to be a, when slavery was supposed to be abolished in 1865, as soon as that happened, we started sharecropping. If you couldn't show identification for employment as you walk down the street and say a white police officer pull up on a horse, he said, "Let me see your place of employment. Show me your certificate showing that you have a job." It's called vacancy law. If you didn't have that little sheet saying you went straight back to jail, straight back to slavery, and it's still today because you got the 13th Amendment, which basically says slavery is abolished except you break a crime. So now, how they start? Now they start dropping. Uh, what was that uh, in Chicago? They drop now. If our people knew the Bible, where the Bible say, "Thou shalt not steal," they wouldn't have gotten caught because they put a van with a whole bunch of shoes in Chicago, and our young men don't have nothing. They're not being taught the commandments of God. They run in there, steal as many shoes they can. Police pull up out of nowhere, now 20, 30 young men in jail. Sixty thousand dollars per inmate. Think about it. It's the same thing going on now. Skip down to forty-eight. Forty-six. I'm sorry. Forty-six. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight. In verse 46. Oh, uh-uh. 37. I'm sorry. 37. Verse 37. I apologize. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment. You know what an astonishment is? Our young women walk around with blue, green, yellow, purple uh, hair in the head. All right. And we went to New Orleans a couple months ago, and we was out on the streets teaching the Bible, and we saw sisters no clothes on. Right. Yep. We saw sisters. Right. Yeah, I'm going to get graphic. We saw sisters with penis Penis necklaces around their neck and they blow it. Remember that? A whistle. It was a penis whistle. Now look at the, the, the lascivious concupiscence that our people have been subject to and our minds is completely gone from God now. It's just completely destroyed from God. That's what you're seeing today. That's what you're seeing today with the destruction. So God said we're in astonishment. Other people look at us and say, look at these Negroes or niggas. That's what they call it. They say, look at them. Look how they act. Look how they behave. First 48. First 48, you've seen the show First 48, right? That's an astonishment. Yep. People watch that to, they, they are entertained by us killing one another. All right. Yeah. Black Black right. So it Black says, right. and thou shalt become an astonishment. So instead of being the greatest nation on the earth like we were meant to be, God says, now you will be an astonishment. Go ahead. And, and thou shalt become an astonishment. Read. A proverb. A proverb. A proverb. Niggas like chicken and watermelon. That's what they say. I hate to use that language, but I'm just trying to bring it to so y'all can understand. They like chicken and watermelon. Oh, everything got to be fried. Oh, they women do this. They men do that. Pussy want to hide something from a Negro, put it in a boot. That's what they say about us. Those are, by, those are uh, proverbs. Those are wise saying, dark sayings about our people. Read, read the last part. And a what? And a byword. So now, instead of being called an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, now you are called... African American, which is two different white men, Let's Scipios Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. So instead of being called Israelite from the tribe of Gad, you call it a Native American. How you Native American? An American comes from the name of an Italian map maker named uh, Amerigo Vespucci. How about Native American? This land was already ours, it already had a name. But now it's known that now you're going to be Native American. Those are all bywords. Those are all thoughts, H-O-E's, B-I-T's. All those names that they give us, those wicked names that they tell us and call us, uh, coons, porch monkeys, all that stuff like that. God said, that's what's going to happen. It was going be, to become a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. So it ain't just in America. I've been to France. I lived there for a year, for two years. I've been to Israel. I lived there for a year. I've been to Russia, Germany. They say the same thing. It's just different names. What they call us in... Um, in Hebrew, they call us koi, a goy, goy, which means slave. They say call it goy, which means slave, but we don't understand it. What's up, goy? You're like, oh, okay, what's up, man? I guess that's what they start talking about back out here. Then you go look it up, you say, man, he just called me a slave. Because that's what we've become amongst the nations. Slaves. That's what they look us look at us as. Right? You want to say something else? Uh, get Isaiah 65 and 15. Let's show you exactly in the scripture on how we end up being called different names. Because say for instance, if my lad, if I was a um, so-called white man, just to you know bring it out, if I was a slave master and my name was Johnson and he was on my own um, property, what would his last name be? Johnson. Johnson, Johnson right? If he, if, he, if he owned a plantation and his last name was um, Smith, who do you think his slave's gonna be? Smith, right? So watch, so watch what the Bible says. 
the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. That's right. And ye shall leave your name. Wait a minute. It said you're going to leave your name. Uh-huh. Go ahead. For a curse. Wait a minute. Are we going over the curses? That was a, that's a curse. That's in that's in Deuteronomy 28. What that is 37, right? That's the curse it's talking about. We was gonna leave our name, and I'm gonna show you what our name is. Because it's not African American, it's not black, it's not colored, it's not Afro American, right. it's not none of those things that was given to us. Read. And you shall leave your name for a curse until my ch- chosen. See that until my chosen. He gave he chose us a name. Read. For the Lord God shall slay, slay thee. thee. He said what? Slay thee. And we were slain, what? During slavery. Right. Read. And call his servants by another name. Call his what? His servants by another name. So we was called by another name. Now, right. since we disobeyed him, we was gonna be called, he was going to be called a Johnson because the slave master Johnson. Right. Or Smith because his, the, the um, white man name was a Smith. So his whole plantation was Smith. Right. You didn't have your name. Right. So then from that, of course, you, they didn't give you that much respect at that time. They just gave you nigger. Yeah, yeah uh, monkey. Uh, oh, where my property at? You know, and then that was it at that time. But as time progressed to what Negro, they said, okay, let's call him Negro. Well, you know what? Just call him black. Well, you know what? Call him a hairstyle. Afro American. How simple can we be? We don't even think like, wait a minute, we call that Afro? What if I ain't got no Afro? What you gonna be called? So, but my thing is, I like to look at it like this. How in the world that the same people that don't treat you right, how in the world they going to teach you right? Come on. Just think about that. If they ain't treat you right, how in the world they going to teach you right? They're not. Right. If they didn't didn't treat you right, how is it possible that they're going to teach you right? They're not going to teach you right. I just want to prove that. Amen. Hey, thank y'all. So I appreciate you uh, coming in. See, that, but you you notice if you notice you and you'll see because he gonna talk a little bit too. He gonna talk some more too. We all gonna want a chord, but he don't. I don't know what he thinking, but we thinking the same thing. That's what Paul talked about in First Corinthians one about being all on one on one chord. Go uh, go back, no sir. Go back through the run. We all on one accord amongst the brothers because we, we, we believe in this and we love our people and we want our people to know the truth of who they are. Right. Skip down to verse 46 now, 46. Deuteronomy we're just going to do two more curses and then we're going to go over a couple of color scriptures and then we're going to pass it to these two brothers. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. Go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the curses, they, that's what is the, 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 the subject, the curses, it said they will be on us for a sign. Now, if I wanted to find this church, I would look for the sign. If I wanted to know where McDonald's was, I look for them golden arches. I look for that sign. So these curses would be identifying markers of who God's people are today. Right. Read that part again. And they shall be upon thee, upon thee for a sign. sign. Read. And for a wonder. And wonder because we've all wondered at one point in our life before we heard this message. Who are we? Why did this happen to us? Why are we subject to this? Read. And upon thy seed. And upon our children. Forever. 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 That seed will be that will be on our children forever. Until we woke up and we started doing what God told us to do. Skip keep on reading. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So we didn't want to serve the Lord. We said, you know what? I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow Krishna. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to follow Cesar Borgia. I'm going to follow Islam. I don't want to do what that Bible say. I read it sometimes. I'm going to go and do what the other nations are doing. Because they got their own stuff established. They got their own uh, government set up. So it's the same thing today. God said, look, you don't want to serve me? That's okay. Keep reading. For the abundance of all things. For everything. Read. Therefore, so since you didn't want to serve me, Israelites, read. Shall thy serve thine enemy? Now you got to serve a nation that God says is your enemy, that hates you. Now listen, I want you to understand what we bringing out is strictly biblical. We're right. not telling nobody to go out and do no harm to nobody because we all know what Romans says about the other nations, how we're supposed to interact with them as far as uh, what it say in Romans 12, 18, be a little peace be amongst all That's men. Right. Right. Everything yeah. lying. So right. not harming nobody. This is for us solely to know who we are so we can change ourselves. Right. So and how we deal with one another. All right, go ahead. Read it from the top again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Come on. 
Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. So now we got to serve our enemies, read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Now you got to always bring this point out. I got to stop on that. Because he said the Lord was going to send this nation against us, right? So when the Lord sent this nation against us, how did they know to come to the West Coast of Africa to get you? Why didn't they go to China? Why didn't they go to Afghanistan? Why didn't they go to Northeast Africa, where the Egyptians are? Why didn't they go to Iraq? Why did they come to the West Coast of Africa, to the gold coast? Because we the gold. Rich. When you read Isaiah 13 and 12, we the gold. Rich. So he said, why would they come to that particular part? How did Christopher Columbus know that the Native American, so-called Native American Indians were over here? Because it said in the Bible. The Bible tell you why they were going to be over here. Ain't no such thing as no bourbon straight. Don't let that fool you with no ice bridge just forming from, uh, where it's supposed to form from? Antarctica to, to, from Russia to Canada. That's not how they got here. They came over here by ship, just like we came over here by ship. But they came under their own will. We didn't come from our own will. So what the Bible is telling you now, God will send your enemies against you, which the Lord shall send against you. That's how they knew exactly where we were in Judah land, in the kingdom of Judah, which is on the west coast of Africa. When you look at ancient Ghanaian um, maps, the Ashanti tribe, that's us. The Igbos, those are us. Read. In hunger. In hunger. So now we go to their McDonald's. We go to their Sam's Club. We go to, we don't hunt our own land. A lot of us may know how to hunt, but we don't do it in, in, in major proportions where we can feed our nation. Majority of our people go to McDonald's when they leave. Go ahead. Uh, you say a hunt. Yeah, we, we may hunt, but guess what? You got to have what? Permission. That's right. A, a what? Permission. A permission. Who you got to go get that permit from? White man. So why are you telling me, even fishing, you telling me God got the, the, all these oceans around us. You got Atlantic Ocean, you know, Gulf of Mexico, the lakes around here. None of it. And I can't catch more than five fish of this specific kind? That's right. I'm, that's slavery. It is. I can't. I can't go out and in, in backyard. If I'm living in the woods, I can't go to the backyard and see me a deer and hunt them. Right. But I, I get in trouble. Exactly. On my land. In your own, your own land. That's I right. just wanted to point that out. That's right. That's, right. that's an excellent it's point. I'll praise the Most High. Keep reading. So it said in hunger. Read. So in hunger and in thirst. So when we were thirsty, we got to go to our enemies because, like I also said. The, you may, the lake may be on your land, but you may not get no lake water and try to purify it and drink it. You can't even catch rainwater from the sky into a bucket and take it into your house for your own personal use. If the government catch you, that's a $5,000 minimum fine and possible two years in jail for catching rainwater that the Lord sent down from the sky. And you mean to tell me we still not enslaved? We can't even get no rainwater and drink it? That's, that's history. That's facts right there. So the Bible said we was going to go to our enemies for thirst when we were hung, when we was hungry and we was thirsty. Read. And in nature. And the clothes on our back. It usually said made in China, made in Taiwan. We picked cotton for 400 years. We picked cotton for free. Now we pay for cotton at Walmart. Shouldn't every black person at least be able to get five, shouldn't I be able to get five t-shirts for free? For all the labor, blood, sweat, and tears that my forefathers had put into this land? That's what the Bible telling you. It's not going to happen. Go ahead. And in walk of all things. So, in education, understanding of the Bible, religion, um, uh, anything, driver's license. I can't go to my brother and say, hey man, look, my driver's license is about to be, um, Made to be renewed. Can you renew it for me? I can't go to him for that. I gotta go to the DMV. I gotta go to another nation of people to have permission. I gotta have permission to be buried. You gotta get a death certificate. I can't just die. And my, and my brother say, man, my brother died. Let me go ahead and bury him. No, brother, you better get permission. Just like being born to the earth. You not you. Even though I can physically see a child. That child is technically, according to the so-called white man, he's not a person until the birth certificate is signed right. by the doctor. That's a curse, y'all. Keep reading. Let me get a little more detail. All right, walk, walk with me. Y'all all got up this morning, right? That's right. Okay, you got out of the bed. Praise God. Did we make that bed? No. What about the sheets? What about when you put your slippers on? What about when you go to the bathroom, wash your face, turn the water on? Dang it. Brush your teeth, get that toothpaste. We ain't make that. The toothbrush. We ain't, we ain't manufacture none of that. Y'all that come from my enemies. I like to get basic so you can see day to day like we are still in captivity. What the scripture say? What you got? Toilet paper. The basic thing like that. Go ahead. Basic necessities that should be just, we should be able to make it manufacture on our own. We don't. So it's that in one of all things. This is the part I really want. Skip to the next slide. Read. And he shall put a yoke 
of iron Keep upon on. thy neck. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Let's see what the Bible says. Oh, there it is. There it is. It said, he shall put, in that same man that at the top of the verse that the God said was your enemy, he will put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. That happened to us in slavery. That's what happened to us now. They're putting the chains on our neck now. But they took them chains off physically and they put them on mentally. What I really want to point out about that is, say, you just woke up enough courage to just run. You know, me and me, my brother, we finna run tonight. We, we running. We, we, we getting about this plantation. I'm tired of that. They will put a yoke on your neck with bells on it. And when the bells, oh, it's somebody running. It's a slave running. Now, they come out and find you with the hound dogs. They come out and find you out there in the woods with them bells. And then today, they got us talking about jingle bells. It's something about them bells that they like. It's subliminal. I'm telling you, it's subliminal. They're doing that for a reason. So he said, he's going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until when? Until. Until, meaning it's a point of time they're going to come off, which none of us have them on our neck now. Read. Until he have destroyed. Until we was calling ourselves African American. Until we wouldn't cross that line. If I put a leash on a dog and, he, and that's the far that he can go, when I take that leash off of him, he ain't gonna go past that line. Because for however many years, for 400 years in our case, he been taught to not cross that line. That's why we get uncomfortable when they're around. We can't really talk about our history. I can't really talk about what happened to us when they're around. It's a subliminal. It's, it's, it's subliminal. Go ahead. I'm gonna show you how destroyed we are, the people. How many of y'all out here have hunted for bunny eggs? How many? How many of y'all have hunted for bunny eggs? Everybody. 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 Bunny eggs? Bunny don't even lay eggs. How destroyed as a people we got to be to go out on a certain Sunday and hunt for bunny eggs? That's how destroyed we are. And also to the point of destruction is when you call yourself, or no, we call each other names that is not a quarter time name. We call each other B's, H-O-E's, nigga. It's the first time we say, what up, my nigga? You like, dang, why they talk like that? That ain't a, a term of endearment. That don't mean I love you, brother. You know, so we destroyed everything that we learned. We've learned from them after they took those jokes off our neck and they knew we would never rise up again. Go ahead, read verse 68 for me, please. Now, okay, hold on, hold on. Read 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Come on. The Lord shall bring the Lord, read, a nation against thee from, a, from one end of the read, earth. Read from top again, please. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from, from far. So he said he's going to bring a nation against us from far. So they came from Spain, uh, Britain, um, Belgium, France, Germany. They all came from these other countries. And they came against our people. And they took us over here to this land. So it's going to bring a nation against thee from afar, read. From the end of the earth. From one end of the earth, read. As swift as an eagle flying. Who got a, did anybody get a flyer? Yeah, I get it. Okay, everybody got a flyer. If you open up the flyer, you'll see on the inside, you got one right there, sister. If you open up the flyer on the inside, it said God said he was going to send a nation against us from afar as swift as the eagle flyer. What's America's symbol, sister, right here? Eagle. The eagle. What's Spain symbol? The eagle. What's, Rat what's Rome symbol? The eagle. What's the Russian symbol? The eagle. This man loved that bird because it's a bird of prey. God said, I'm going to send, he gave you a sign of who the nation was he's going to send against you. So I'm going to send another nation against you from afar as swift as the eagle flying. And that's always been his symbol. Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So do you, did, we, did we speak English? Did we speak French, nope. Portugal, nope. Portuguese? We didn't speak these languages. Hebrew. Italian, he, we didn't speak these languages. We had our own Hebrew dialect here. Right. We had a Hebrew dialect in Africa. Right. We were so great in Africa that the Africans said, man, get these Negroes out of here. <laughs> they, they, they coming in our land and building up all kind of stuff. And they look good up in there. We didn't do that. We got to get them out of here. So they sold us to the Grecians. So you heard that term, African soul? Can I get that real quick in Joel 3? I'm, I'm going to digress that we're going to get to the slave ship. We're going to move on. Go ahead. Uh, in 1969, what did America do? Anybody know? They landed on the moon, right? When they landed on the moon, what did they say? One step. No, they said something landed. The who? The who landed? The eagle. The eagle has landed. Hmm. Joel, wrote real quick, Joel chapter 3, read verse 4, please. Joel chapter 3, verse 4. Watch the prophecy. Read. Yea, and what have you to do with me, 
Those were Canaan's sons. Tyre and Zidon. You read about them in the New Testament. Tyre and Zidon. Those are African nations. Hamitic nations. God said, what do you got to do with me, Tyre and Zidon? Read. And all the coast of Palestine. Who are the Palestinians today? The so-called Arab man, which is Ishmael, That's according right. to the Bible. So he says, what do you have to do with me, Hamitic nation, African nation, and is Ishmaelite nation? Read. Will you render me a recompense? Go ahead. And if you recompense me, swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head. So God said, do you think since I didn't choose you to be my people, you're going to do something to my people and I ain't going to come back on you? That's why the Arabs are a wild men today. That's why their nations are falling today. That's why a lot of, you see a lot of those things on TV is showing like African children in poverty and stuff like that. And they're going to get you to feel sorry for them. But God said he has to recompense them for what they did to his people. Because your first slave master was what? An Egyptian. Right. The Egyptians had the Hebrews in slavery first. And they looked just like us. That's right. right. So it's not about just exactly right. what these right. other nations. It's about the Egyptians. So they still got to pay for what they did to us. Go ahead. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. Read. And have carried it unto your temple, mm. my goodly and pleasant thing. That's us. Read. The children also of Judah. The children of Judah, so-called African Americans. Read. And the children of Jerusalem. The Jamaicans, which is Benjamin, and the Levites, which are so-called Haitians today. Those three tribes, the southern kingdom of Judah, were taken from the west coast of Africa. Read. Have ye sold? Who they did that? What did they do to us? Have ye sold? Read to who? Unto the Greeks. Who the Greeks? <laughs> who are the Greeks people today? White people. White folks. Edomites, right. according to the Bible. The Bible says that he was the, the these nations, the, the African man and the Arab man was gonna sell us to the white man, and it happened perfectly like God said it. Because this God word right here, it ain't gonna be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken, they have to be fulfilled. He said Africans was gonna sell my people to the white man. And now in 2018, we still telling that lie to our children that Africans sold other Africans. No, Africans sold you. African sold Israelites into right. slavery. That's fact. We got a book called Babylon and Timbuktu. Two can bring it out. All right, Get, go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 6 day. Okay, go ahead. It said that you may remove them far from their border. Mm. So now, ain't we far from Africa? That's a 24, that's a 22 hour flight. We a long way, it took a year and a half to get from the coast of Africa to America. And on the way, they dropped our bodies off in the, in the oceans and now the sharks still go through the middle passage till today because they was feeding on so many of our bodies. Go to Deuteronomy 28, 6 day. Deuteronomy chapter 28, right. verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So it said God was going to bring us back into Egypt. Now let's get the biblical definition of what Egypt is. Exodus 20, verse 2. Because Egypt, that's an old, that's an old Greek word. Egypt was called Mizraim. Mizraim, which means bondage or slaves. That's what Egypt meant. But we're going to get the biblical definition of what Egypt means. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Come on, precept upon precept. Read. I am the Lord thy God. Come on. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of Egypt. Read. Out of the, the hold on, out of the house of bondage. See that? Slave. Egypt means house of bondage. bondage. It means slavery. So now we're going to precept upon precept. We're going to come back and we're going to fill that in. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28, 16. Now we know what the Lord is saying. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Or slavery. Uh, read. Again with ships. Mm -hmm. I look, he wanted, I, I, I kind of wanted this a nice mic, so I'm not going to drop it. But that's a mic drop. God said, if, if, if all those other things the brothers read to y'all didn't, didn't resonate in your spirit, that you the Israelites, this last one will. He said, the Lord going to bring you into slavery again, but this time by way of cargo slave ships. What other nation did that happen to? Black. Us. Only us. Yes, I'm Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, um, the, 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 the get on a point that you said about, the, the, what did he say, the eagle has landed, right? So who got a dollar bill in here real quick? Somebody have a dollar bill? Could I use it as a demonstration? Could you come up, brother? Yeah. And then I want y'all to look in y'all on um, the um, flyer that we gave y'all. I like to do demonstrations. I like to be real and live. So, now, on one side at the back of the dollar bill, it has what? The eagle on one side, right? 
the eagle has landed, right? Letting you know what nation of people that was, right? right. Then also we have a pyramid over here, right? right. So who built the pyramids, right? We did. We, did. Mm -hmm. we was in slavery in Egypt, right? Right. So are we? Who put the marrow? We did. We did. Yeah. They let you know that we what, we was gonna be in slavery or again over here, and guess what? Who, who did it? The Edomites. That's right. their biblical name, the Edomites. Right. Mm -hmm. I just want to bring that illustration. Here you go, brother. No, 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 no. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, all praise to the Most High. And that's, a, that's an excellent point. So now when you look on the back of your dollar bill, even when you're going to buy that nice Lexus and you put that dollar bill out there, it's still a reminder. You in Egypt. You in spiritual Egypt. Spiritual Sodom. And Egypt, that's what we at right now. We're in spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah and Egypt. So it said, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Just like Moses said it was going to happen, it happened perfectly. 1619, transatlantic slave trade. Right. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And we would not see our homeland again. So, for instance, if I asked you what our homeland was, what would you say? You say the motherland, right? Mm -hmm. What is the motherland? I don't know. We say we don't know, right? Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Just to bring it out. Galatians chapter 4. Because when Paul was writing, Paul dropped little nuggets. That's why I said Paul was a doctor of the law. That's right. Paul was nice in the scriptures. He knew the Old Testament. He knew Christ. So he, he dropped a little nugget on us in Galatians 4, 26. Let's see what he said. Read. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Come on. But Jerusalem. But Jerusalem. Read. Which is above is free. Read. Which is the mother of us all. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what was the Garden of Eden? It was in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the motherland. Now, for, for semantics, somebody can say, well, that is Northeast Africa. You're right. We got something called the Suez Canal in the 1800s. They separated Egypt from Israel. So you can't say that was the land of the case. So you could say that's Northeast Africa. But we're not from the cold continent of Africa like we've been told, like the West Coast. Go ahead. Now, just, just to show you how slick some people can get. Now, when you think Middle East, what pops in your mind? What kind of people pop in your mind? A, a certain color of person. When you think Africa, what kind of person pops up in your mind? So they wanted to separate Israel from Africa. That's why they built the Suez Canal. It's a mind play. You think, when you say Middle East, you think, oh, these, this, this other kind of people. But when you say Africa, you think about us. Same thing they say about Christ. Oh, he's from the Middle East. Right, he would right, look right. Middle Eastern. Right. No, right. no. When Christ, when Christ was running from Herod, where did they go? Egypt. Where did they go? They went down to Egypt. Egypt. Who was in Egypt? Dark-skinned people. Right. So if Christ was going to hide amongst dark-skinned people, what color was he? <laughs> Absolutely, because he would have stood out amongst very dark-skinned people. Same way with Moses. How did Moses Talk sit on the lap of Pharaoh and he not know, if he was white, how would he not know? Hey man, this ain't my grandson. Who you done bought up here? He thought he was African too. He thought he was Egyptian too because he was very dark skinned. Same way with Paul. You know what I'm saying? So uh, do we go back to Deuteronomy 28, 6 day. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Read. thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies. So we got slave ships we sold to our enemies, read. For bond men. For bond men. And bond so slave man, slave woman. Don't let Satan trick the woman to think that she above the man. We together. We came in here together. We're going to leave together. So don't let that trick, get that feminist movement stuff trick you, read. That's right. And no man shall buy you. Now, we just said we're going to be sold. So that word buy is an old quicker word, which means redeem. No man will redeem us. We have been redeemed. Only man gonna redeem us is Jesus the Christ. Christ. So I'm gonna pass on to my brother right here. Go ahead, brother. Real fast, I know we pressed for time. Um, I'll praise to the most high for um for y'all men and sisters. Um quick question. Who are we as a people? Since he went over the presentation, who are we? Hebrews. We are the Israelites. We are the Israelites. Now for the next question. Does God love everybody? Yes. Yes, he loves everybody, no matter what nation you're from. He loves you. We his chosen. Right. Say again? We his chosen. So does God love everybody? Yes. She says yes. Give me um, Romans chapter 9, verse 13. I want to show y'all something. And if you got a scripture to prove that God loves everybody, I want you to tell me. Because we're going to, 
Let's read what the Bible says. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved. So the Bible says, Jacob have I loved. Uh-huh. Read. But Esau have I hated. I'm going to pose the question again. Does God love everybody? No. 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 So, so, this is a scripture that comes to my mind when I think about that. Probably y'all minds too. I want y'all to call the scripture. Tell me what you're thinking about. I think about uh, 1 Chronicles 7 14. If my people who call by my name. By whose name? My name. Right. If my people. my people. So, who is God's people? We are. We are. Okay, it's another scripture that comes to mind. There's two come back. That says that God loves everybody. In our mind, we think it says God loves everybody. What scripture is that? It's in the New Testament. It's in the book of John. You know what you say? That's what we're going to go over today. John 3.16. Because if this means this, then Romans 9.13 is wrong. That means that's a contradiction in the Bible, right? So we need to find out what John 3.16 means, though. Let's go to John 3.16. Read. Read. Let's read. Matter of fact, let's start up. Let's go to John 1, uh, 3 and 1. Let's see who's talking. The book, Let's get some context. The, the, the book of John chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh-huh. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. So he was a Pharisee. Right. In order to be a Pharisee, what did you have to be? Oh. Read, it, read it again. Read it. Read, keep reading. We're going to find out what he is. There read. was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Uh huh. Nicodemus. A, a ruler of the Jews. He was a ruler of the Jews. Uh-huh. Read the same came to Jesus by night. What was Jesus? What was he? What was his nationality? A Jew. So we got two Jews talking. Two black people talking. That's the content. We got two black men up here talking. They're talking about salvation. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. And, in, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. So, he said, Christ said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Who was Moses lifting the serpent up to in the wilderness? Because this is some history Christ going into. You got two black men talking. Go to Numbers 21. We're going to find out who Moses was lifting up the serpent to in the wilderness. Numbers chapter 21, verse 6. Read. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. So, this is in the wilderness. This is in Numbers. They're in the wilderness. The Lord sent fiery serpents amongst the people. Read. And they bit the people. They bit the people. And much people of Israel. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did it say everybody? Much and people. much people of Israel died. So that's who was getting bit in the, in the wilderness with Moses. So y'all know the story. Moses had to end up making a serpent. He put it on the pole. And when you come look at the serpent, you get healed. We know the story, right? Let's go back to John 3 and 14. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Just like Moses did this to the, in the wilderness. Who did he lift the serpent up to? The children of Israel. Read. Even so. Just like. Must the son of man be lifted up. So he, he, if he was lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to, uh, to the children of Israel. Christ got to be lifted up to who? The children of Israel. You said his people. Hold that. Give me a Matthew 2 and 6. We're going to find out who his people is in the New Testament. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, uh-huh. are not the least among the princes, princes of Judah. Uh-huh. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. God's people who? Israel. Everybody. Israel. God loves everybody. Israel. Y'all understand that? John 3, 14. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. Again. Right, we're going to read 14. that again. Uh-huh. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so. Just Moses, like. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Go down to 16. Verse 16. For God so loved the world. So we get this, oh, God loved the world. So let's find out who God actually loved. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. Matter of fact, start at verse 6. I want to show how, show y'all who y'all are, how special y'all are. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 Read. For thou art an holy people unto the, the Lord thy God The Israelites are holy people We separate Special. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee Wait a minute, wait a minute Special. Brother, did you just did you choose them shoes to put on? Mm-hmm. So you had some more shoes in the closet mm-hmm. But you chose them, right? Yes, mm-hmm. Read the Lord thy God have chosen thee. So he chose us. To be a special people. So we special. Uh, when the last time somebody told y'all y'all was special? Uh, 
the Bible is saying we are chosen people, are special people. Unto himself. Unto himself. Read. Above. Wait a minute. What was Martin Luther King fighting for? Come on. Equality. The Bible says we are what? Above. See, that's what we don't know. We are above. All people. What? All no, the Bible didn't say that. Above yes, all people that are upon the face of the earth. Come on, man. Have anybody ever told y'all y'all above all people? Why can't we do everything better? Why we play sports better? Right, Who's the right. best lawyer? Right. Uh, y'all probably remember what, what was the um, track band on um, um, Red Track back in the day, your oh, day, bro? Jesse, Jesse Who? Jesse Owens. Owens. Yeah. Give me another name after Owens. Jesse Owens. Carl Lewis. Carl Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. I'm running everybody. Right. Who's the best lawyer? Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Even under this oppression that we in. We yeah, singers, the singers, they can't hold a candle to us. Amen. Nobody can. Amen. Good. They even got holograms now. Of Tupac and yes. you know, Rasega. It's holograms that's making millions of dollars. They're not even here, they did and gone. They still making money off of us because we that special. Verse Read. Seven, uh -huh. The Lord did not set his love upon you. So he didn't set his love upon us because of any people. Right. You were the fewest of all people. But he did what? But because the Lord loved you. The Lord loved who? We talking you. about the Israelites. Go back to John 3.16. So John, we, we find out the Lord loved the Israelites. Can you find me a place where you love the Philistines? No. no. Kill them. No. Where you love the Amalekites? No. Kill them. Kill them. Wipe them out. Right. right. So why when it comes to the New Testament, we think he loved everybody? No. Somebody told us the scripture wrong, explain it to us wrong. Read. John 3 verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world. So we know the Israelites, God loving the Israelites. What's the world? What is the world? Because um, when y'all go home, y'all might watch some sports. Y'all ever heard anything of the sports world? Or the entertainment world? The fish world? They got a place called Sea World, ain't it? So there's, evidently there's different definitions of the word world. Right, right. So let's read that again. John 3 verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world. So he loved the world. Let's finally go to um, John um, chapter 20 verse 18. Let's see what this world that he's talking about. The book of John chapter 18 and verse 20. Read that thing. And Jesus answered him. Uh -huh. I spake openly to the world. So he spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue. Uh oh. He gets specifically about this word. This word world. He's spake in the synagogue. And in the temple. Uh -huh, in the temple. Whether the Jews always resort. So who hanging out in the synagogue in the temple? The Jews. So when he says world, he's talking about the world of who? The Jews. The Israelites. Isaiah 45, 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. This is saying exactly the same thing. Christ is actually quoting this scripture when he when he, when he he quoted John 3, 16. This is what he quoted. Read. But Israel, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord. No, everybody going to be saved. Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Uh-huh. With an everlasting salvation. Uh-oh, that's some words they used in John 3, 16. Read. Ye shall not be so we won't be ashamed. Read. Nor confound uh -huh. world without end. There go the world right there. World without end. Israel is a world without end. Right. Israel is the world. Right. Go back to John 3.16. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. For God so loved the world. We're talking about the world of Israel. We know. That he gave his only begotten son. Uh -huh. That whosoever. Uh oh, that, that word whosoever. You're like, oh. Whosoever. <laughs> So what, what did that take you to? You're like, man, that means everybody, right? right. Acts chapter Acts. 2, verse 21. Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Read that thing. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord uh -huh. and shall be saved. Uh -huh. Ye men of Israel. Wait a minute. I thought it meant everybody. So we're talking about the Israelites once again. Right. Right. Matter of fact, hold what you got. Go to Acts chapter 5, five verse 31. Let's see who repentance is for. Is it for everybody? No. Men of Israel. Israel. Yeah. Acts yeah. chapter 5, verse 30. Uh huh. Verse 29. The Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So, the doctrine that was taught to us that God loves everybody is man. But we really read out the scripture that says that God only loves Israel. Mm -hmm. So, we ought to obey who? God, God rather, rather than men. Than read. The God of our fathers. So, Anybody know English? Uh, y'all went to school. Mm -hmm. Our, what's that word our? If we was gonna break that word our down. That's a, that's a possessive pronoun. So it's pertaining to a certain people. So who? The God of our fathers. The God of our fathers. Raised up Jesus. Uh-huh. Whom he slew uh -huh. and hung on a tree. Read. Him 
have God exalted Read. with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. He's talking about Christ to do what? For to give repentance, Who repentance for? to Israel. Wait a minute. I thought it's over to everybody. Israel. And what else? And forgiveness of okay. sin. That's all for Israel, man. Right. All right. Matthew 15, 24. I'll pray. It'll let you come up, Ops. I'm going to get a few more. I'm gonna, I got a few more scriptures, then I got to let the Ops come up. Right. Uh, Matthew 15, 24. Book of Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Read. Sorry. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, uh -huh. I am not sent but, but unto the lost sheep lost of the house of Israel. Israel. So, what is this? What does it mean? It's only for Israel. It's only the kingdom of heaven. Matter of fact, give me Acts 1 and 6 real fast. Acts 1 and 6. The kingdom of heaven is only for Israel. Only for Israel. Acts 1 and 6. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Uh-huh. And when they therefore were come together. The disciples coming together. They asked the Lord. They asked Christ. Saying, Lord. Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom? The whole of the kingdom? Talk about the kingdom of heaven to who? Israel. Israel. Who, is, who is it for? Who the kingdom for? Israel. Israel. Salvation is only for Israel. Israel. It's only for us. Right. It's chosen. It's chosen. Revelation 21 and 12. Let's see what the kingdom look like. Let's see what the kingdom look like. And who, who is for? Israel. Read. Revelation chapter 21 verse 12. Uh-huh. And had a wall great and high. So this is the kingdom of heaven. Had a wall great and high. And, and y'all know that walls are built to, built to keep people in or out. Right. Both ways, read. And had a wall great and high. Uh-huh. And had 12 gates. Uh-oh, we got 12 gates in this wall. Yes. And at the gates, 12 angels. Now, I know, I know all of y'all ain't been in church all your life. Y'all probably went to a club once or twice. I don't, I don't know. Could be. But a lot of times at these clubs, they had this big old dude standing outside the club. And he called it what? Bounce. So what's at the gates? What's at the gates? And at the gates, 12 angels. So this big black angels outside the gate, because they, they are black. Outside the gate, read. And names written thereon. Uh-oh, it's got some names written on the gates. The only way you get in them gates, your name got to be on there. The names of who? Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. What? The names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Who getting them gates, y'all? Israel. Give, give me one more scripture. Give me James 1 and 1. I'm going. I'm still done, y'all. James 1 and 1. James 1 and 1. Let's see. Because y'all, I mean, the Bible for everybody, right? Right. We are finna see. James. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <coughs> Okay. James, a servant of God, uh -huh. and of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. to the twelve Wait tribes. Wait a minute. Who, who is James writing this book to? The twelve tribes which oh, yeah. are scattered abroad. So we've been Greetings. scattered abroad. Greetings. In other words, it's shalom. Right. Peace. Peace. Right. To the twelve tribes. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Who is salvation for? Israel. 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 All right. Come on up. All right. Let me touch on some things um, that he just brought out. Um, get Acts 13.22. Let's get that as well. I mean, the Bible, we got the first we got to understand. I'm, I'm going to ask this question. If they didn't allow us to read and write in slavery, oh my God. Mm -hmm. my God. who taught us about God? Yeah. Right. They taught us about God, right? Mm -hmm. So, they they thank you, they sis. Want what they want they whatever they wanted us to know. Mm -hmm. So, you actually think they was going to tell you. Hey, you know what? You were the Israelite. You were God's chosen people. You were God's chosen people. You think they was going to teach you that? They were going to tell you, you nothing. You're worth you nothing. You're not even, matter of fact, you're a Gentile. You're not even in the Bible. Right. When I was growing up, I didn't know where I fit in in the Bible. I didn't know where my people my, was from. I didn't know anything. Right. Growing to church from young and on up, didn't know no history, didn't know nothing. Didn't know that this Bible was full of all the information that I wanted and I've been searching for. I didn't know it was in the Bible. I didn't know I was in the Bible. I didn't know I was so important. I didn't know my nation of people was so important. That's right. But now read that. The book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. And when, yeah. and when he removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, uh -huh. I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart. Which shall fulfill all my will. Mm -hmm. Of this man's seed. Hold on, I say of this man's seed, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. Have God according to his promise. Hold on. God promised. Now this is God promise. Uh -huh. 
So we can't we can't take what God said His promise is and try to change it. No. You add to the word. That's right. Mm -hmm. Of Bring. this man's seed have God according to his promise raised unto Israel. He raised unto everybody. Israel, Israel. a savior, Jesus. He raised unto who? Israel, a savior, Jesus. Come on. When John. That was it. So that, I just wanted to get some more scriptures on that. Because we always think about everybody else right. rather than ourselves. Right. But we got to understand that we was taught philosophy and, and Bible by our oppressor. That's just the truth. Right. Now give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Talk about Let's show you why we was taught by our oppressors. The book of Jeremiah. That's why the Bible says we got to bethink ourselves. Right. We got to remember who we are. All and then right. we can really get the full understanding of God. We can get the full understanding of Christ. Because right. now we know our history. If you don't know history, we lost. That's right. Right. That's Read. Right. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage. So now, if we are in slavery, don't you think we discontinue from our heritage? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I'm quite sure if this is a slave master, he's not going to let me continue to do what I want to do. Right. Or take for instance like this, the movie, uh, what's the name of the movie? Roots. Right. Mm -hmm. Kuta Kente, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That was his name, right? Yep, right. Mm -hmm. So now, did he keep the name Kuta? Nope. No, Tobin. No. Tobin. Tobin. Who gave him Tobin? His master. 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 So that's just to pull out a point that, to of uh, illustration that we weren't going to keep our customs. We weren't going to keep our history. We had to conform to what they wanted us to be. So now read that again. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. He gave us Israel. He, he gave us the name Israel. And I will cause thee. To serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. He said he was going to cause us to serve our enemies in the land which we know it not. Because when we was on those slave ships, right. we had no idea where we was going. Right. Right. We were just right. on water for months on end. Right. Read. For ye, have, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger. So we made the Lord mad because we broke his law. Right. So I just want to pull that showing that we was going to discontinue from knowing that we the Israelites. Did that happen? That happened because yeah. a, none of us knew that growing up, or unless some some of the older people may know. Because I think uh, what's her name, Harriet Tubman, they she knew that she was Israel. Their family knew that they was Israelites. Right, right, right. Do you see what I'm saying? So we lost that, that 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 history of it for the majority of us because we grew up thinking that what we was African American. That's all they told me. So I'm African American. Right. I ain't never questioned it. Why we never questioned anything like that? We never questioned it. We never question what we was taught. We just take it and run with it. But no, the Bible says something different. I also get Psalms 106 and 35. So if we was going to discontinue from our heritage, that means we was going to eventually learn somebody else's history. Say, for instance, like Thanksgiving. Is that your history? No. Is 4th of July your history? No. 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 Right, because we were 1776, we was picking cotton. Right. Right. How is that our history? Right. We didn't make that day up. Nope. Did we come on, on the plantation and say, you know what? We free now. We're going to 4th of July. Right. No, we were still no. swing, low swing, Terry. Right. We, right. we was in the cotton fields. Right. So that ain't our history. Right. So the history that's out there or what they got us celebrating or the things that they got us doing is not ours, which is not, and it's not in the Bible. Right. We got to go back that's to what's right. in the Bible, that's which is right. our history. That's right. That's right. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 106, verse 35. But we're mingled among the heathen. We were mingled among the other nations. Yeah. Just like if we was in China. If we was in China for 400 years, what religion do you think we'll be? Buddhist. 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 Right. Buddhist. You think they're going to let us be serving some other God? No, sir. No, we're going to serve their God. Right. You got to understand, all the other nations got their gods. That's why God said we are his people because all the other nations know it. They ain't fighting over, over God. over Jesus. Right. They got their own Buddha in the corner. Right, right. Uh, Arab, they got their own God. Talking about some Allah. Right. They got their own. own. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But where the mix-up came is when the white man got us in slavery and picked up our book That's right. mm -hmm. and tried to teach us something out of our book. Right. That's where everything got missed. The lines got blurred. Yeah. So now when we think, go up, we think, we know we love the Bible. We know it's something about us. We're so religious as a people. Wow. But we don't read it enough to know that it's actually ours. Oh, right. It was written to us. That's 
right. Because only, because guess what? If I wrote, if I write this book, say for instance, I write this book to the 12 tribes of Israel. I got, you know, uh, I'm writing a letter to the 12 tribes of Israel, which are my sons, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, I love y'all. Y'all are my world. Everything belongs to you. All the heritage that I'm leaving belongs to you. And I put the book here, and he, a Chinaman, come grab my book. Was I talking about the Chinaman? No, no. I was talking about who I wrote it to. That's the Bible. The Bible was already written to a specific people. But when in slavery came, we've been in slavery, they grabbed it and said, slave obey your master. God love everybody. Why they stay on top? That's the whole trick. They bamboozled us. But we can read now. We can read everything is in the Bible. Read what you got. So, uh, Psalms 106, verse 35. But we mingled among the heathen and learned their works. We did what? Learned their works. Did we not learn Thanksgiving? Amen. Did we not learn Christmas? Yeah. That's that, because Jeremiah 10. Matter of fact, we're going to get that in Jeremiah 10. Right, right. We learned their, that's their work. Fourth of July, their work. Memorial Day. Everything that they give us is their work. It ain't got nothing to do with God nor the Bible. We, and they served their idols. We served their idols. Which were a snare unto them. You see that? That was a trap unto us. Right. You see what I'm saying? We ain't supposed to be doing it. We ain't supposed to do what they do. Give me Psalms 96 and 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 96 and verse 5. For the God, for all the gods of the nations are idols. Wait a minute. Read that again. For all the gods of the nations are idols. For all the gods of the nations are idols. This is God himself telling you what was going to happen. Right. Read that again. For all the, Psalm chapter 96 verse 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. So he was telling you that, look, I chose you. That's who I chose to deal with. Why do you think he destroyed the Egyptians? That's right. The Egyptians, they had, wasn't worshiping the most high God. They had their own gods every day of the week. You see what I'm saying? It was the same with the Philistines. Same with everybody else around the land. You see what I'm saying? But you got to understand, this is your book. This is your history book. <coughs> Give me um, uh, Psalms 8. I'm sorry, wait. Psalms what? 147. Yeah, 147 and 19. You already on it. Because yeah. you see one mind, one spirit. Right. <laughs> Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So wait a minute. Read that again. He Psalms 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his word up to Jacob. His statutes. Which name was changed to Israel, right? Right, right, right. His statutes and his judgments. So stop right there. It's his statutes, mm -hmm. law, statutes, oh. and commandments, and judgments. Mm -hmm. Because right. let me ask you this. When have you seen a Chinese man no man slave for 400 years? Never. No. What about the Arab man? Never. No. No. What about the so-called white man? Never. No. No. They ain't get the judgments. We got the judgments, and we still going through the judgments. Read. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. He have what? Not dealt so with any nation. Wait a minute. So why are we trying to make this about everybody else? Right. Chinese man, come on, hug, hug me too. That Chinese man smacking us at the stores. Right, right. White man still shooting us down. Amen. But we always try to make everybody come, come up, love me. They, they ain't dealing with you. They don't want to deal with you. Because the Bible is a true book. Read it again. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. They haven't known them yet. Because they're going to have to get payback for what they've done to his chosen people. Amen. All the things, all the crimes that they didn't got away with. What we always say, God is a just God now. Yeah, right. no, so wait a minute. Get you. Get you. Get you. Get you. Right. So so God is a just God. No. We never paid anybody back for all the things we went through, right? No. We haven't did that. Right. No. But guess who's gonna do it? God, God is it because he is a just God. No. Right. You, you just God, they're gonna just do us how they want to do us for all these years and, and counting. And it's gonna be no judgment. No, it's gonna be just. Right. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Give me Joel 2 and 27. I like to touch on these other nations because you got to love you. God chose you. Right. Mm -hmm. Read what you got in Joel, Joel 2 and 27. Let's see what God say. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God said you're going to know that I am in the midst of Israel. It's, it's evident. How did we create all these inventions in slavery? We created the broom, the mop, 
the what else we created? Uh, uh, the, the washing machine, the light. We created all this stuff. We was in slavery. That's right. <laughs> we created all this in slavery. So you know he's in the midst of us because we we those people. Come on. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God. Wait a minute. We just went over that word your. Your, your house is your house. I can't bust in this house somebody it's my house. That's your house. That's your car. That's your wife. It ain't my wife. That's your wife. So wait a minute. What is God saying? Read that again. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And none else. Wait a minute. He closed the door. You cannot, you cannot wiggle in and try to make God say something else. Who is somebody please raise their hand that is strong enough to change what God said? <laughs> Let me please see your hand. Nobody. Nobody can't change what God said. God said, look, I'm in the midst of Israel, and I'm the Lord your God, and none else. Well, watch this. And my people. My people, Israel, shall never be ashamed. Shall never be ashamed. What he brought out in Isaiah 45 and 17. That's right. We should never be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed of that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, give me Amos 3 and 1. Check it out. Amos 3 and 1. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken among, against you, O children of Israel. Oh, who? O Israel. children of Israel. Y'all probably ain't no children of Israel in the Bible that much, then. <laughs> I, I know I ain't know when I started reading. I actually was going to Creflo Dollar Church um, years back when I was in Atlanta. I was in this church for like maybe four years, and I was beginning to go to the seminary school. To learn, you know, I always want to learn the Bible. I never see myself a preacher. I'm like, I'm too rugged. I'm from the streets. I, I can't see myself. That's just not me. You know, I don't know where I fit in at that, you know. But I was going to the school because I wanted to know. I knew it was something missing. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I began to read, actually. Wait a minute. They was teaching me one thing, but I'm reading the Bible. I'm like, they're saying another. They tell me I'm celebrating Christmas. I'm reading Jeremiah 10. They said, don't do this. Right. It's pagan. Hey, what, is a tree, what does a tree got to do with Christ? <laughs> Somebody please help me out on that. What does a tree have to do with Christ? Why is it in your house every year? That's an idol that you don't even know about if you don't know about the Bible. That's right. But I don't want to get lost. I go all over the place. Go on. Oh, Amen. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Oh, against, children of who? Of Israel. Okay. Against the whole family. Meaning the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Because sometimes we forget that. We, we think we're different people. We think the Mexicans are not our brothers and sisters. Right, they are. Right, right, we right. think the Native American Indians are not our brothers they and sisters. Are. They are. Mm -hmm. We think the Haitians are not our brothers and sisters, they but are. they are. Mm -hmm. The Jamaicans. Right. Cubans. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Brazilians. Them are all our people. Mm -hmm. They just got off at a different stop. The boat just stopped at a different different piece of land. But we're the same nation of people. Read. The whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt say, you only you what? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He created everything. We can't go against what God wrote. Give me Malachi 3 and 6. We can't change what God said. Yeah, finish that. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So you want to get punished the most. Why are we the number one people in jail? Like the white folks ain't committed crime. Come on. They took a whole land for sex. So why God ain't deal with them yet? Because like we read in Psalms 147 and 19, his statues and his judgments are to Israel. They going to get theirs. What about the Arab? They sold us in slavery too. But wait a minute, they got, the, they got all this oil money. They got all this stuff. They got a lot of stuff going for them. They ain't getting shot down on TV. They ain't going to jail doing uh, uh, football numbers of a crime they didn't commit. You know how many brothers in jail that they didn't do? Come on. Hey, because look, let me, let me, let me speed y'all up on that on, as far as crimes we didn't do. Let me speed you up on technology, what they got now. They got now where they can look black. What them, the, 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 um, the, the whole face, they put a whole rubber mask on mm -hmm. and then go around they can do whatever they want then they say a black man did it All right. mm -hmm. they setting plenty of people up they've yep. been doing it if it's just now getting out mm -hmm. doesn't mean it just started right. that just mean it been going on it just now coming to you got now that came out some years ago right. that cell phone was out many years before that rich people had that microwave they had microwave before that then just before it get to the mass of the public 
That's when it come out. That's when we know about things. But it'll it be out before time. Star Trek, long. Oh, don't, don't, don't Star Trek. <laughs> hey, what was it? Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Come on, yeah. For I am the Lord. I change not. So, wait a minute. So, why would we get to the New Testament if we think it changed? It don't. don't. It don't change. It, don't change. it just, you get mixed up when it say Jew or Gentile. Right. But when it's talking about Gentile, it's talking about us living like heathen, which might well be a Gentile. Mm -hmm. Let me prove that. Give me uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 or 2. Bring it out. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. It said, ye know that ye were Gentiles. You can't be a past. A hey, I can't be once, a, once ago I was a Gentile. If you a Chinese man, you always a Chinese man, right? right. If you an Arab man, you always been an Arab man. So how was you once were mm -hmm. a Gentile? Read. Carried away unto these dumb idols. Carried away unto what? Dumb these idols. dumb idols. So we was carried away to these dumb idols. Come on. Even as you were led. We was led in slavery to right. these other nations. Right. And we picked up their works like over here. Thanksgiving, 4th of July. We pick up their work. So we are actually Gentiles living like this because we're not living like God wants us to live. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got placed, we got that term placed on us. Right. Back then, it was the northern kingdom, Israelite, that was more so in the idolatry. Right. So the southern kingdom was calling them Gentiles right. because they was living like Gentiles. Right. Uh, give me that in um, John 7, 35. John. I just want to touch that Gentile because that's where we would stumble. But you got to understand, before the, the Romans was ruling, right. who was ruling? Egyptians. No. Before the before the Romans was ruling, think about it. What what they call it? the Roman? Hold on, how does it? The, the, the who? The who? The Greeks? The Grecians, right? Now we got to understand the Bible that they took out. I mean, the book that they took out the Bible is called the Apocrypha, which means the hidden book. I got it in the Bible right here. It's in the sixteen eleven. They took the Greek captivity out. So when you get to the the New Testament, quote unquote. It's not in there. So it jumps straight to the Romans. So when it say neither Jew nor Greek, right. it's not talking about a white man walking around. No, it's talking about you because you was enslaved to the Greeks. Right. And you was living like the Greeks. Right. 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 Like we're living like the uh, uh, them now. now that's, right. <laughs> that's all it's talking about. But watch this read. John chapter 7 verse 35. Then said the Jews amongst themselves, whither will we go that we shall not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles? It says, should he go among the dispersed? We were scattered, like he read in James 1 and 1. We were scattered. Scattered and dispersed is the same. We were scattered and we were dispersed. Come on. Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? You see that? To the dispersed among the Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? And teach the Gentiles. Meaning teaching what? The Israelites. Come on. Uh, That's it. Go to, um, give me Second Maccabees. Let's go into the history of, of the Greeks real quick. Give me Second Maccabees 6 and 6. Second Maccabees chapter 6. This in this book. Somebody uh, uh, pass that. Show, show them that in the Bible. I want them to know that this is the King, King James Version. You can still find that book. You can still find the book itself or you can order the Bible itself. The 1611. So now read that. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days. So it wasn't lawful at the time when the Greeks was around for us to keep the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Or ancient feasts. Come on. Or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. You see that? We couldn't call ourselves Jews anymore. Right. Just like when we came to this land. Could we call ourselves Israelites? No. 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 We couldn't even call ourselves Kunta. No. It had to be changed to Tobit. So we couldn't call ourselves Jews anymore. We couldn't call ourselves Israelites anymore. Come on. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint. Meaning we was forced to celebrate birthdays. Because that's not the Bible custom to celebrate birthdays. Read. To eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to uh, compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying items. Come on, get to the there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen. So it went out a decree, meaning it went out a law. Say, for instance, Donald Trump put out a decree today. Come on. Say, 
It's a law that if any black person call themselves Israelites, put them in jail. Right. It's the same thing. They, he can do that. Right. They got the they, 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 they state land right now. They're ruling. Go ahead. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion. You see that? It was a law went out that we should observe the same fashions. Today, it ain't got to be a decree. Today, we, we willingly want to celebrate right. what they want us to celebrate. It's not a decree. It's not a law that if we don't do what they, what they want us to do. You know what I'm saying? Now we willingly want to celebrate their Thanksgiving. How are we celebrating the own mass murder of our brothers? That's just like if the sister, this y'all sisters, I kill you, and then I call you next year, the day I did it, and say, hey, you want to come eat and celebrate for, with me? That's the same thing going on. You want to come celebrate this mass murder that I did against your people? Because what, what does the Native American have to be thankful for? Does anybody think about that? We always say, and you know we try to put a spin on it. Well, you know, nah, I ain't, I ain't. I know it's they, they on um, Thanksgiving, but you know, I'm just thankful for you know my family. Right, right. Okay, what about the Native American family? What are they thankful for? Smallpox, right. chicken pops, fever, trail of tears. Right. Which are your brothers and sisters, which you don't know, because like Jeremiah 17 and 4 said, we was gonna discontinue from our heritage. Right. We don't know that all of us is one. Really? Against the Jews, that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. Uh -huh. And whosoever. So now, if we didn't want to do those customs, whoso and whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. So if you didn't want to conform yourself to a Gentile, right. you would be put to death. Right. So most of our people what? Conform to the Gentiles. Right. Right. So then when you get to the New to the, to the um, New Testament, let's go back. Yes, sir. John chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? You see that? So you got to understand when the Bible is talking about the Gentiles, it's just talking about our people was living like the Gentiles. Not actually somebody else, another nation. You got to understand this Bible is always... Is all is only written to us. Like you brought in, you went over Kingdom of Heaven, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's for the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Get it again. Revelation twenty one and twenty. Then I'm gonna close 21. it down because I know we we probably all over the time. Revelation chapter twenty one verse twelve. But matter of fact, before you get to that, let's show you that what Paul said. Give me Romans um eleven and two. No, what is it? Eleven and one. The book of Romans chapter eleven verse one. I say this. Have God cast away his people? Because you get to the New Testament, they might try to switch it up and say, ah, oh, that's, that's over with. You know, uh, Israelites no more. Israelites not even here no more. No. Watch this. What Paul, I mean, what Paul said. I say then, have God cast away his people? Have God cast away the Israelites? Of course. God forbid. Meaning no. Mm -hmm. Read. For I also am an Israelite. Paul said he's a what? I you also am an Israelite. <laughs> this is after Christ, ain't it? Right. Paul oh, said, I am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham. What tribe he from? Of the Benjamin. tribe of Benjamin. He would be, he would be um, called today in Jamaican right, right. if he was a lot later. That's what, that's the, the Benjamites in the Bible. That's the, every tribe, you have 12 tribes. You have 12 tribes. They try to say they don't know anymore who they are. That's a lie. Right. They know. They just was never going to teach us that. Right. You, like I said, the same people that weren't going to treat you right, weren't going to teach you that you're an Israelite. That's right. Come on. God, God, have, God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Which he foreknew. Right. Now, to put a little extra sauce on top of that scripture, because the Israelites ain't never going nowhere. Give me that in Jeremiah 31 and 35. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Thirty-five. How many of y'all have seen these two things every day? Well, you know it, it's up there every day. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Sun and the moon, and the moon right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeremiah 31, 35. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. So we know, well, evidently we see light out here. Come on. And the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night. So we know we got light at night, so we know the moon and the stars still up there, right? <laughs> Which divided the sea with the waves that roar. Come on. The Lord of hosts is his name. 
For those ordinances, for if those ordinances depart from before me. He said, if those ordinances, meaning the sun, the moon, the stars, depart before me. No. Uh -huh. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord. Say who? Saith the Lord. No, say the pastor. Say the Lord. When you get to the New Testament, in the New Testament, brother, it doesn't matter. Say the Lord. Say the who? The Lord. Okay. Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me. Right. Well, no he no said, he said forever. He said, look, if the sun, the moon, and the stars is gone, then Israel gone. But if the sun, the moon, and the stars still here, Israel is still here. So don't let nobody lie to you and say, no, the Israelites, not, that is not, not no, that's not in, in existence anymore. Stop it. They got there for the fake Jewish people. Matter of fact, they want, give me that. Give me that Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know, I know thy works oh my and God. tribulation. He said he know our works and tribulation because we the ones got the tribulations. We right. go through tribulation every day. Wow. You can get in trouble any minute. You just driving down the highway, driving while being black. You might get pulled over. Right. I'm just saying it. Nobody had to go through all these obstacles that we have to go through. Went through and currently going through. Mm -hmm. Nobody, I ain't seen no Chinese man standing in the, in the line talking about or have, have a sign on saying, I am a man. Right. No, I didn't no. see the Arab go through that. Mm -hmm. I didn't see them go through none of that. I didn't see the white people go through that. Tell my, hey, I'm stay fighting for their nation. No. That was us. Tell my, I am a man. Right. We had to go through all these things and currently going through them. Come on. Revelation 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. And what? Poverty. poverty. We the ones in poverty. We the one make them rich because we the one working in $9 an hour job, $8 an hour job. Amen. Read. But thou art rich. He said, but we are rich. We are rich. We don't know, but we are the richest people ever to walk this face of the earth. We are God's chosen people. Read. And I know the blasphemy. Wait a minute. He said, I know the blasphemy. Meaning you're speaking against the Bible. Lies. I know the blasphemy of what? Of them which say they are Jews. We know these white people say they are the Jews, right? And are not. And are what? And are not. But what? But are the synagogue of Satan. They're the synagogue of Satan. So the people over there claiming to be you are the synagogue of Satan. Mm -hmm. The only reason why they can claim to be you because we way over here. Right. We don't even think about this our land in Israel. Mm -hmm. That thought, that thought have been been removed, and they done a good job. Let's show you how they did that. Give me that in Psalms 83. I got you, I got you. Let's show you how they did that. I'm sorry, I got to keep this. The, the scriptures are I keep rolling. It's good, this history. Let's show you how now that we over here and they're in our land claiming to be us, right? Right. All right. Psalms. Start at verse 2. Psalms chapter 83, verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Meaning they come together, right? And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Come on. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel. Let me show you how crafty this is, right? How many corner stores does Arab own? Ooh, all of them. All of them. <laughs> Why is that? Wait a minute. I thought they both been the enemy of America, right? Is it supposed to be American the enemy? I thought last time I checked. But they over here owning all the corner stores mm -hmm. in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Why we don't own our own corner stores in our neighborhoods? Right. Because what? They have taken crafty counsel. Why do you think when the Arabs come fresh from over there, from what, Yemen, what they come? Yemen. Yemen come fresh over here, right in the hood where the black people at. Wait, they, wait a minute. How they, find, how they know where to go? Because it's already systematic designed for them to go that's right. mm -hmm. in a certain place, right? So that's it. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden one. And have consulted against the hidden one. We the one hidden. We the one don't know that we the Israelites. All right. Watch this. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Have they, have they done that? Yes. They done a great job. And because for one, they, they done us from quote unquote black people don't even get together with black people, right? right. That's for one, right. but they did black, so-called black people from Mexican people or Hispanic people. They disconnected us from that gap. For our Brazilians, they, dis they disconnected us from right. Native Americans. We disconnected from them. They have done a great job of dividing and conquering. Right. Mm -hmm. They done a great job. Amen. So the scriptures is true. Read it again. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Didn't that happen? Yes. The name of Israel was no longer in, in existence until the Lord put the spirit back upon his prophets to wake us up in these last days. Right, right, right. 
Now we can read and write. And it's so, it's so plain and clear to y'all, we read straight out the Bible. It is nothing amazing that we're doing. It's just now we're just reading what's supposed to have been read in the first place. Right. But it was on a, on a specific time that he wanted it to be done. Right. Because he allowed us not to read and write for that time. We had to suffer that punishment. So now read. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. He said they are what? Confederate against thee. Why is it that Chinese can have a Chinatown? They got a Chinatown. Why they get they just got a Chinatown? Where our town at? <laughs> and we built this country. Wait a minute. And like I was said, they don't even vote. When have you seen the Arab with the head wrapped all up in the line with all white on, wrapped up beard way down here in the line talking about I'm voting my day, my friend? <laughs> what is he voting for? Right. When you seen the Chinese man vote? But yet still they they come over here and get all the best of the best lands, get all the best of the best jobs, opportunities. Oh, as a matter of fact, don't you know the Arab can come over here? When they come over here, they get a hundred what the grant a hundred thousand dollar grant. Right. That's right. Grant, I ain't say loan. Right. Grant. 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 Right. And don't have to pay it back. Don't have to pay that back. That's a fact. Well, wait a minute. Why we can't get that? We built this. My forefathers, foremothers built this country through blood, sweat, and tears. What you say, Alfred? What kind of flag they fly around here? Read that. It says, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate. What kind of flag? Even the Mississippi flag. Itself, what's in the top left hand corner of the Mississippi flag? A Confederate flag. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. So now God is naming these nations of people. He said the tabernacle of, of who? Of Edom. That's why you got to know who's who in the Bible. The Bible is speaking on specific nations of people. He said the tabernacles of Edom is number one. Who do y'all think number one is? A Confederate against us. White man, that's his biblical name. And we're going to get that. I know you gave me the time. I just want to get that last scripture to show who Esau is, what nation of people you're dealing with. Right. Now read that again. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Who you think is number two? As far as being confederate against us. Like I said, who got all the Arabs? Arabs. Arabs. That's his biblical name. Right. The biblical name of um, uh, the so-called white man is Edom or the Edomites or Adumi. Then you got so-called Arabs. Right. They're Ishmaelites. Right. Read. Of Moab. Who you think Moab is? China. China. Chinese. That's right. Mm -hmm. Read. And the Hagarines. That's an African nation. Gibal. African That's nation. Ammon. Ammon. Japanese. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. Amalek. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what Amalek is. <laughs> Read. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. So you got to understand the Bible is you have to read the Bible. Now we're going to close it up. Give me Genesis 25. I just want to show you where when he, he came out with the first scripture of Romans with 9 and 13. Let's show you where they come from. Genesis. Let's show you who is it said Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, right? Because, come on. Because she was barren. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Because at first she couldn't have kids, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. And the children struggled together within her. So it said the children struggled together inside of her. Come on. And she said, if it be so. She was like, Lord, if I pray and, and you know, I wanted to get, uh, be able to have a baby, you know, I prayed that you, you gave me that answer. You got me pregnant. But why am I hurting? And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So she went to ask about the Lord. Come on. And the Lord said unto her. Two nations are in thy womb. So wait a minute. It said two nations are in thy womb. Not two people. Two nations that's going to carry two different nations, right? Come on. And two manner of people. That's heavy too. Two manner of people. Meaning we do things two different ways. Right, right. They up, get a bloody steak and tell my, oh, it's juicy and good. You, we'll be like, oh, that steak is not done. Right, right. It's two manner, two two ways of living. We do things different. Mm -hmm. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. We shall be what? Separated. We shall be what? Separated. 
and from you, thy bowels. And you wonder why we it just don't mix. It's like oil and water. Right. No matter how much you talk about, kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. Five minutes later, pop, 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 pop. Not guilty. Right. You be like, wait a minute, what is this? What is this? Why is it like this? We can't. We cannot go against what God made. We can't. Whatever God made is what He made. It's nothing you can do to divert that. Or being just corner minded. You cannot make nobody love you. You remember when your mama always told you, baby, you, that boy, you can't make that boy love you. No matter what you do for him, you, can't, you cannot make somebody love you. Right, right, right. You understand? And you definitely can't make what God made a certain way to change. Right. Sorry. Good luck with that. All right. I'll let you try it. I'm not trying. I'm just going to believe what God said. Okay. Well, that's what you said, Lord. That's what it is. All right. Read. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Wait a minute. These are two nations of people. What nation? Right. Of, it said two. Uh, read it again. I've got tongue twisted. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. It said people. one people shall be stronger than the other people. Or one nation shall be stronger than the other nation. Right. What nation do you think is stronger than... than what, which nation is the strongest? The huh? The Israel. Israel. Who is Israel? We are, we are. Us. Us. We ain't jumping off no five store building because we can't pay the rent. <laughs> we say, go, what we'll, we'll, we'll do is probably go to sleep. we we'll go to sleep, bro. We'll go to sleep. I can't hear it. <laughs> we ain't finna say jump and get on the skyscraper. Tell me I'm finna jump because I lost $5,000 in, um, in the stock. All right. And that's why we have so many children. Because we so stressed out. Right. One thing I got is to come home to my wife and get something to eat and make love. That's right. that's it. That's it. <laughs> because guess what? One nation shall be stronger than the other. Because look, at, look, just think about it like this. From picking cotton from sun up to sundown in the hot sun. Right, 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 right. No other nation can be able to do that. Amen. Amen. You got a little five-year-old baby pulling a sack of cotton in that age. Don't don't pass out. Because one shall be stronger than the other. And the one people shall, and the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. So the elder is supposed to serve the younger. Right. Supposed to, right? And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Not identical twins. Right. Right. Fraternal. Come on. And the first came out red. So the first came out what? Red. That's what so wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What we in Mississippi, right? We in Mississippi, right? I'm finna see if we in Mississippi. What do we call them? Rednecks. Red 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 no, it's not red bone. We'll call them red bone. We call out within we call, we call it, within each other red bone. We we'll, we'll call them red bone. We call them rednecks. They call themselves redneck. They proud to say a redneck. So now is their neck the only thing that's red? No, oh, everything. They all body red because what? Their blood is showing through their skin. They don't have any melanin or pigmentation in their skin. Melanin. Right. They don't have that. That's why the sun, that's why they, they got to put sunscreen on. If they're at the beach, they got to put all this stuff on. You just go out there with some grease and Vaseline on. And you, you straight. You ain't got to worry about no cancer or that. We just did the sun. <laughs> you just said, you good. You ain't worry about none of that. Tell me, you, you got your sunscreen today? We don't need no sun, sunscreen. Yeah. But they put it sunscreen. I don't know what that is. We don't need that. Get that skin cancer and all that. We don't get that. Read. At verse 25. And the first so, wait a minute. It said the first came out red. Why did it say, why now it's saying the first came out red? Why, why would it be indicating that? Matter of fact, let me keep reading and I'll come back to that question. The first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. Red and hairy. You take that razor away from him, he's, you gonna see how, uh, what they say, we the caveman? No, he gonna be the caveman. <laughs> <laughs> and the first came out red all over like a hairy gun. And they call his name Esau. His name is Esau, meaning his name meaning wasted away is he. Right, right. That goes into right. a lot of different reasons. Right. Too. Wasted away is he going to a lot. But keep reading. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau so, Hill. So his brother came out. He took hold of Esau Hill and came out. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Why didn't they describe his skin color? Hide that. 
No, because he looked like all the other dark skinned babies that came out right. before that time. Right. From the beginning of Genesis, the first man was dark. Right. It said from the dust of the ground. When you dig deep in the dust of the ground, you, it's the darker you get. I mean, the deeper you go, the darker you get. That's why. This was showing that this is the first. This this this, this is not normal. Let's put this in the book. Let's say he is red in heaven. Read it again. Genesis 25 or 25. Right. And the first came out red. All over, like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years when she buried him. And his name was called Jacob. So remember, you got two nations of people. We come from the nation of Jacob. I mean, we come from Jacob's seed. That's where we descend from. That's our um, father, forefather of the tribes. You know what I'm saying? So now you got Edomites, all the other nations, like you got the um, Germans, Russians, mm -hmm. right. what, Spaniards, all them. They come from Edom. That's where they come from. They're the Edomites. So we're going to shut it down because, you know, he was nice enough to let us come. I definitely don't want to step on your toes. <laughs> but it's much more. But I brought that out because he said, Jacob, I love Esau, have I hated. It's for a reason. And his name, Wasted Away, is he means something because you got to understand, God put a spirit on them to do what they do. Because most people can't do it. Say, for instance, how can you castrate a man or burn a man alive? Most people cannot do that. Most people can't even burn a frog. But to burn a human being or castrate him and put his private in his mouth, something is wrong with you. I'm sorry. So you got some type of spirit on you that ain't normal. So you, so you have to understand that. Like I said, we ain't coming up here to uh, say, oh, go do something. Anybody know? God fight the battle. That's right. right. Just right. know who you are and keep God's commandments That's is what it's right. about. That's all right. about it, though. So, you know, with that, we're going to close it down. Thank you, gentlemen, for um, letting us come and um, present you know, biblical history. And um, know that you're the Israelite, but most importantly, know that we we are commanded to keep, keep God's commandments. All right? Huh? Matthew 19. Well, no, nah, we're we going to close down. He, 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 we close down. Hey, Dr. Watkins, we want to thank you. Uh, Pastor Hobson, we want to thank you uh, for allowing us to come in and teach today. Uh, Pastor Dumas, how you doing? You all right this morning? And my brother right there, he comes to the, to the station every Wednesday. So we appreciate you introducing us to Dr. Watkins and, and, and Pastor Hobson. We appreciate y'all, and um, we look forward to hopefully talking to you all again. Amen. Thank you. I'll tell you what, let, let's, let's give him a hand. Let's give him another hand. Boy, I'll tell you what, this was... Uh, this was this was fantastic, uh, no doubt about that, and uh, it was it was extremely fitting uh, since we we're into the Greek and the Hebrew and what have you. And uh, like I said earlier, God has got a way of 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 getting you connected with people that you need to be connected to. Uh, I was just sitting there uh, uh, gloating and chuffing at the bits because they said so many things that I've been trying to say. Uh, down through the years about how uh, who we are uh, when we were on Greek and Hebrew one uh, we identified exactly who we are uh, and all of this separation and what have is there for a reason uh, it's there for a reason but we are indeed uh, God's chosen people we're it we're it uh, and they had all the scriptures and what have you to back up uh, exactly some of the things that we've been saying uh, I was really chomping at the bit when he was talking about the gates and the walls and what have you. As a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of a sermon series. I looked at Milton and James and uh, I looked at Jeanette and what have you. We were talking about the gates uh, and the gatekeepers uh, and how the gates of the city of heaven and what have you and whose names was inscribed on them and they came right back and said the same thing. So it, 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 it makes me feel good when you have somebody can come in and they can really under, underpin. But we know the reason why so many times uh, I see it over and over again uh, this scripture that my people would perish because of the lack of knowledge. So all you guys that were here today, uh, you, 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 uh, I hate to say it, but you, you up here. And those folks who said, they are down there. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, and I have no reservation for saying this, but this is true. You know where the church is? Here it is right here. 
Here it is right here. So again, I, I want to thank uh, our brothers so much uh, for coming out here today and for being a part of, of, uh, of this institute. Uh, and uh, uh, the majority of the churches in our district, uh, we have representatives from these churches who are here. Uh, we do know that the month of February, what's that? Right, so, so my thing is some of these churches, some of the local churches that's here in the district. Uh, I know how to get in touch with these, with these brothers. Uh, and, and as you know, uh, let's see, who came up from, uh, from South Mississippi? These two brothers. Yeah, I came up from the coast. Oh, okay, came up from the Gulf Coast. Y'all know where South Mississippi is, way down there. So if they're willing to, to, to drive and to come up, uh, you know, I asked them, I said, look, what you guys need is get nothing. What they want to do is get, get the truth out. Get the truth out. Uh, and what they're saying, man, and uh, my son's over there, we were talking about it, boy, I've been knowing this stuff for years. And, and we need to know who we are. That's right, that's right. And don't let folks fool you and make you look down like you're that's nobody right. and all that. Hey, we're it. That's right, that's right. We, we are it. Uh, and the only thing we have to do to get God's blessings that, and, and the inheritance that he has given to us is to do what he say. Amen. Is to do what he say. Mm. So again, I mean, I'm just elated and I can't thank you guys enough. But again, uh, Black History Month that we all celebrate is coming up in February. So uh, I'm just recommending or suggesting a challenge to the church in this district uh, to get in touch with me and I get in touch with, with them. Uh, and you want them to come over doing Black History Month, it'll quit you from doing all them programs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, we do all those speeches and all that kind of stuff and, and don't have no more edification, but it's all over with it. But you want to get some edification of exactly who you are then get in touch with these brothers here and let them come up and do your presentation. All right, again, let's give them another hand. Thank you all so much for coming. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.